Hey everybody, it's me, it's Undead Viking, and here I am with another video review. Uh, today, the game I will be reviewing is is Rialto uh, by Stefan Feld. You may have heard of him, maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, Stefan Feld's got, had a few uh, pretty awesome games come out lately. And uh, one of the games I reviewed fairly recently was Bora Bora, a game I enjoyed a great deal. Uh, one of my all-time favorite games, actually, is In the Year of the Dragon, which is one of his earlier designs. Uh, Stefan Feld, uh, like, as I said, has designed Rialto, and Stefan Feld is kind of known for having uh, very neat little um, mechanics that seem to be separate from each other, but he manages to weave them together very elegantly, and that is a word that is used perhaps way too much when it comes to describing uh, uh, board games and board game design, but he manages to do so very seamlessly. And, uh, and then it's one of those, it's, it's a game that like, and it seems to be like every single time I play a Stefan Feld game, at the very beginning I'm like, oh, what am I, what am I doing? What, how does this work? And then all of a sudden you get past that first turn and you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And then the game kind of opens itself up to you. And uh, Rialto is no exception. Uh, it, it follows uh, that cool little path as well. Uh, this is a game that uh, should be in stores if it isn't already, it should be very, very soon. So if you don't see it, uh, I know like end of July or right now is about when you should be seeing it. It's coming to you from Tasty Minstrel Games. Um, you can play two to five people, uh, and the game lasts about an hour. Uh, I and my friends, after we played it a few times, were able to get it down to around that 45 to 50 minute area. Which, in all honesty, for a game that... Um, kind of uh, gives back a lot of enjoyment. It's, it's pretty cool that you can get through it that quickly. Well, anyway, um, uh, I dig the game. I've already said that. I'll explain more as to why I dig the game when, in my conclusion. But right now, as you probably well know, I am going to show you how to play Rialto so you can get a better grasp of how the game is played, obviously. And uh, perhaps when uh, you purchase the game, uh, you will be able to uh, perhaps refer back uh, to uh, this uh, this video if you have any questions about the rules or what have you. So, uh, on we go. Let's uh, learn how to play Rialto. Alright, let's learn how to play Rialto. Alright, um, I've set up the game already. Uh, the game um, has a... Uh, a track located up here that determines turn order. The game has handled over uh, six rounds. And during those six rounds, you're going to be placing uh, your councilmen, which are these little uh, wooden dudes. And obviously, these are all the different colors of the different people playing. And you're going to be placing them into these little sectors of the city and to uh, maintain control over that portion by obviously having more than anybody else. And that's going to be worth points at the end of the game. You also earn points um, through other various ways. Uh, you earn points for these buildings over here that you create. You'll also earn points for uh, money at the end of the game, councilman, things like that. But I'll go over that in just a little bit. Um, first thing you do uh, after you get everybody, uh, everybody picks their color, you start off with five of these councilmen. Um, you, the rest of them are in the general supply. Uh, you, you are going to be playing cards to pretty much do everything in this game. And one of the things you'll be doing by playing cards is getting councilmen out of the general supply uh, to be placed on your little personal game board, which is this. Um, this has a location over here for your money that you keep located. And all these little spots here are for the different buildings you'll have. You have a maximum of seven buildings. Um, if you ever have seven buildings you want to build another building, uh, you uh, take a building uh, from the supply over there and you place it. And then you, you take the building you're replacing and you put it back into the supply. And then um, each one of these buildings has a number on it, one through four, and you'd earn those victory points at that point. Now, the reason you get the points when you place it back is because... At the end of the game, you're going to get those points anyway. Um, so the mechanic of the game is obviously since you had built the the, the building, um, they want to give you those points so you don't lose out on those. But anyway, uh, you'll keep the councilman here on this little board, and everybody gets one of these. Um, so here's these uh, little tokens. They have one through six on them. You shake them up, and you place them in these spots. And the reason you do this is because you do this randomly, I'm not really looking, is that 
you are going to be contesting for these locations. And the order in which you're contesting is determined uh, by these numbers. You can see it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, so we'll put this over here because this is the marker you use to determine where you're going to start off with. Um, you'll notice that in, in these little areas where you'll be placing your councilman as you play, uh, there's these little spots here. And these are for where bridges and where gondolas are going to go. And they're going to be covered over that. And this is what a bridge token looks like. And there's a little stack of six of these. And you know those are the points that, are, that they're worth. And so when you place them, you put them on like that. And so that means now, at the end of the game, these five victory points are going to be uh, given to the person that uh, has the most uh, councilmen in this area. And in this area, uh, it'll be worth four points. Um, these do have random numbers. You can see this one is six and five. You cover these up, you stack them, and you don't know which one is coming up next. So you, you can't uh, always know what the next one's going to be. Um, the gondolas always have one and one. They will never be anything different than that. Uh, but they work the exact same way. When you get to place them, you place them in those locations. And that's kind of neat because, one, um, it's a situation where uh, that actually will help you maybe because if you're vying for control of a location uh, you can use it to increase the point total that part's worth but you can also use it to kind of uh, bone somebody if they have a lot in an area and they have uh, you know like this section which has you know one two three four different uh, bridges that are that are feeding into that that sector and you know somebody is like just trying to get all the these points pointed into that direction well you can then you know take one of these and you can place that there and you just used up a spot and it's only worth one point and so uh you know things like that uh, can have a multi-purpose all right um as i said the, the the game is driven by cards uh, uh you know i if you watch these reviews i i hate the little tiny cards it's because i have these big giant hands and i just i always feel like i'm going to rip these apart uh what you do is and i'm not going to uh, deal out every single row of cards. What you'll do is you'll deal out, deal out rows of six cards uh, for uh, one for each person that's playing plus one. So I mean so if you had five players you'd have six rows of cards. And so you just deal out these rows like so. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you know I'm only gonna do like three of these just because they take up a lot of room. And then one last one. Okay, now what you, let me do one more. I apologize. And four, five, six. Okay. So um, the person who is in the first player to act, and as I said, this track is, determines who's the first to act. So if you're the furthest ahead on this track, it's called the Doge track, uh, you'd go first. Uh, if two or more people are tied, it's whoever's uh, disc on top would go first. So the blue player in this situation, they'd get to pick one of these sets of six cards. So they look at the cards and they determine what they want. And I'm going to explain what each card does here in just a moment. But I just so what you're going to do is you're going to look and see what you want to accomplish this turn, and you're going to take the cards that you think are going to best help you. So. You know, they look at this and they decide they're going to take this one. And then another player takes this one. And, like, if I had more, like, each each of the five players take one. And, like, and so somebody took this one. And then eventually um, there will be one left. And you don't take the one that's left and, and like, discard it or anything. Uh, you leave that out because of the fact that the cards that weren't taken, um, there's buildings that you can build that will allow you to add these cards um, to your hand. So you just kind of put those off to the side and you, you commence with the first round. And um, the first thing that you do after you do that is each person is able to draw uh, two more of these cards and then they have to discard down to seven cards. Now certain buildings, and I'm going to explain what each building does in just a little bit, certain buildings will allow you to um, do things differently. Like you'll be able to take the card out of the the leftovers over here. Uh, you'll be able to increase your hand size by, by a one or two. Uh, when you draw two instead, you draw three, things like that. And so 
It's important to note, however, that uh, you get money at the beginning of the game depending on how many players and whether or not you're the first player or the last player. Obviously, first player gets less money. Like in a five-player game, uh, the first player gets one gold. Uh, if you're playing a five-player game, I believe the, the fifth player gets like three. Um, to activate a building, you have to put, like if you had this building, let's say like that, um, to activate it, you would have to have a coin and then you just say, in this turn, I'm going to activate that, and you pay, pay a coin. You put a coin on top of it, and that means that you've activated that particular uh, building. But, so, in this first round, um, that's when the green buildings are used. When you're drawing these cards, you're picking those cards. And then on your turn, you decide whether or not you're going to activate a green building. So, after everybody else has cards, uh, you kind of get to the meat of the game. And this is where um, all the actions uh, start taking place. And what you start doing, and there's a nice little uh, track over here, and this is actually pretty well done here. Um, these two sections really don't mean anything because um, the they're really straightforward. But And it might be tough to see, um, but there's an A, B, C, D, E, F, and there are um, six different sections uh, for uh, the, the actual card playing. And what you do is you start off with, you start off with choosing a certain type of card and and then and the first one is is called what's the doge card and these are these cards and each person starting at the first player uh decides how many if they have any of these cards uh, how many of these cards they're going to play and the first player puts down their cards the next person puts down their cards and so on and so forth until you finally get done with all five people you don't have to play any cards even if you have these cards in your hand uh, you don't have to play them. You you can hold on to them for whatever reason, uh, perhaps. And because when you're playing your seven cards, you can save those and save them for the next round, um, if you so desire. You still have to discard down, but you know you do you can save those cards. Um, pretty simply, uh, whoever has the most, well, for every one of these cards you put down, you get to increase your your standing on the Doge track over there, and you increase it by one. If you play the most of these cards, you get to increase uh, one additional space on the Doge track. So you get to move even further up and either ahead of or can extend your lead over the other players. And that's the first uh, card that you're allowed to play. Uh, the second card, and i got to find one here. Oh, and I should mention really quickly. There are joker cards like this. Uh, joker cards obviously are jokers. They can be used to uh, represent another card. So like if you had one doge card like so and you played a, a joker card this would be two. Now if you have no cards whatsoever and of course I've got to find another joker here's one uh, no cards but you wanted to play a doge card you could play two jokers uh, to represent one doge card and then if you had a third joker and this is for any card um, like say it's, it's the building cards or it's the councilman cards. You can play two to equal one and then add another one and that would be worth two. So you can, but uh, you know, most often it seems to me like jokers usually end up getting used in conjunction with the other cards. But anyway, um, this little sack of gold is the next one and this is obviously money. Um, each person, for every one of these you play, you get a, you get one gold coin out of the supply, uh, and then if you play the most of these, you get an extra gold coin. Pretty straightforward. Uh, buildings. This is where you get to start using buildings. I'm going to explain what each building does here right now, after I explain how this works. For each one of these cards you play, you can choose a building with the value equal to or lower than the number of cards that you have played, and then you put them on the free spaces that you have on your board there. Uh, if you um, play the most of these, you get to add plus one to the value. So, if, like, if you played three of these and you played more than anybody else, you'd actually get to buy a building of four or less. Now, it is very possible and will happen that people will play, like, four of these, and then they'll get a five. And the values of the buildings are one through four. So, you can't then take, you can get two buildings, but you are not allowed to take, say, like a building of three and then a building of two. You have to take a building of four, and then whatever you have left over, you have to take that value or less. So, let's say you got six, you had played six building cards, you take a building of value four, and then you can take a building of value two or one. You can't, you know, take two, two threes, for example. So, buildings. These are really straightforward, and I'll just explain each one. Um, 
the green building, uh, level one green building. Uh, what this means basically is that you are can either take one card when you're drawing cards from the the one uh, deck that wasn't taken, or you can take three cards uh, from uh, when you draw instead of two. Uh, the level two building uh, gives you plus one to your hand size. So you instead of start having a deck of hand of seven, you can have a hand of eight. And remember, all these cards have to be paid for. You have to activate them. They don't just stay with you. Um, this one, it combines both the plus one to your hand size and then the one or the three, like the other one did. And finally, level four gives you the one and the three, but also increases your hand size by two. So pretty powerful, actually, because you're getting that extra two cards um, added in. Now, the yellow buildings, uh, once again, take gold to activate. And the yellow buildings are ones that you'll be activating while you're playing cards. Um, I really like this one. This is this is pretty clever. Um, this one, the level one yellow building, it's called a delay. And the player, you pass your regular turn and get another one after each player has had their turn. Now that might seem a little confusing, but what this does basically it allows you to go last. It allows everybody else to play their cards out in front of them. And so, like, your building cards. So one person plays a building card of two, another player plays a building card of two, another one plays a building card of three, and then one person passes. And then it gets back to you, and you have three building cards, and you have a joker, and you really wanted to get the highest level in building. Well, when you play this, it allows you to go last, and then activate, and then play just the cards you need to. You don't, like, you know, you don't, waste your cards. And notice that little gold coin there? Remember it takes a gold coin to activate? You doing this, you get a gold coin back. So you get to do this for basically for free. And it allows you to act last, which is very important. Uh, the level two, uh, the building here, uh, the level two building allows you, you can play exactly one card as one other type. So, you know, you can play, you can say, well, in this case, this doge card is a gold card, you know, or or what have you. Uh, level three, you will see um, there is a joker on that spot. And this building is considered a joker uh, when it gets activated. So you're just able to like, you know, basically pretend you have an extra card, you know, so you can just put a gold coin on there and add one to the total of something. And finally, uh, very powerful, uh, building um, allows you to play one card exactly two of one other type. So uh, you know you play a councilman card and you can say it's like two gold or what have you. So really powerful. All right, um, now I'm going to show you the the blue buildings, but the blue buildings don't get activated until after all of the card phases are done. So um, I'm just going to go over them because I'm doing the buildings right now. Um, the uh, level one building you can see right here. Uh, this you can return one of your buildings and take a building of the same color worth exactly one more than the return building. Uh, and the new building cannot be activated during this round, so basically you can't just take it and take another one, and take another one. So of blue. Um, so obviously it's a really cheap way to upgrade uh, your buildings with with that one. Uh, this one, uh, pretty simple. Uh, you get a victory point and you can take one of your councilmen from the general uh, uh, supply into uh, your personal supply. So you get to take them out of here and put them on your board. Uh, you also get, uh, like I said, you get the victory point. And if you have uh, no other councilmen in the general supply, you get an additional victory point. So if you've gotten all your dudes out of here and you use one of these, um, you get to add two victory points, basically. And then the third one here. Uh, the third building, uh, the player advances a number of spaces on the doge track up there um, equal to their uh, the current position uh, of their counter. Now basically uh, if you are in third place in turn order you get to add three. If you're in fifth place you add five. If you're in first place you add one. Um, this has been used a lot of times in the games that we played to like have somebody jump ahead uh, really quickly, uh, and you know, just using that to their ability. And finally, pretty basic, you activate this three victory points. You know, but victory points are kind of tough to come by in this game, so that's a very good building. Anyway, 
So back to the cards. Uh, th we've done the building phase. That allows you... Remember those buildings had a one, two, three, or four. So you play your cards. Uh, and then you can buy a building and you put it on your little spot there. And the next spot, you can maybe barely see it right there. But it's a little bridge. And uh, this is the bridge cards. And let me find one real quick here. There we go. And the bridge cards, uh, each player, each per card played, you get a victory point. For every one of these, you get play. If you don't play any bridge cards, you lose a victory point. So it's always a good idea to make sure you have one of these or a couple of jokers. Uh, you, if you have the most cards played, you get an extra victory point. So you get, so if you played like three, you get an extra victory point, so four. And then you get to play the bridge token on any spot. Uh, on, you know, just you, you go ahead and you, you pick where you go. You don't have to place it next to the one. You, you can, you, free connection, any free connection that has nothing on there between two districts, and you decide how do you want to orient it. Uh, the next is the gondola, and here's a gondola card. Uh, the gondola card, uh, for each one of these, you get to uh, play, you can move one of your councilmen uh, from the general supply into your personal supply. And if you, once again, if you have none in there and you play these, you get a victory point uh, per missing councilman. So if you had two councilmen over there and you played four of these, uh, you'd get two councilmen and you get two victory points. So pretty simple. But then you got to get them into that location uh, because that's how you get them out on the board. If you have the most, you get to play or you get to place a gondola tile, which is one of these with the one one, and on any of the any spot, uh, any free connection between two districts, two districts, and then he takes a councilman, not from here but from the general supply, and he places it in one of the two spots that he's connected. So, if you placed it here, you'd take, you know, and it was blue, you get to go and you'd like you could place it there, or you could place it there. Now, if you uh, if you have no councilman in your uh, in your supply, uh, in, in, as far as like in the general supply, uh, you get one victory point, and then instead, maybe you can use a councilman from your personal supply, or you can move it from another district. You can just you know transport over. So, if you're out and there was one over here, you could you know move them over there. Pretty simple. Uh, now, the next one and the final card is. The, the councilman card. And you see, it says Venetia on there. Um, for each one of these play, the player gets to move a councilman from your personal supply into the district you currently are in, and so then you get to place, um, and then up to obviously the maximum you have in your personal supply into that location. And uh, if you don't have any more councilmen in your personal supply. Um, you can move councilmen that you already have placed on the board. So it isn't like you just can't do anything if you don't have any over here. And that actually is really useful because it gets you to, to move other people around. Like, you know, you can uh, maybe give up on a, on a location that you know you're not going to win. And you can move them over to try to take over something else. Uh, if you are the... Uh, uh, if you have... The most cards played of, of the councilman cards, pretty simple. Uh, you just get an extra councilman that you get to uh, move around. Um, there is uh, one other thing that you have to do is that you notice that there's this little five victory point and five victory point marker there. And you can notice that there's like the kind of like the blue area and the orange area. The, uh, the first player that has a councilman in all three of these locations uh, on either spot. The first player to do it gets a five victory point bonus, and then you turn this over, meaning that the five victory point bonus has been taken. Uh, it's a one-time bonus. You just add it to your point total here, and of course, there's a scoring track that goes all the way around the outside. And as soon as somebody qualifies for that, they get that. You don't wait till the end of the turn or anything like that. As soon as it happens, you do it. And that is all the different phases of the cards. Now is when you'd activate any blue buildings that you wish that you may have uh, that you and you pay obviously the gold coin to activate them, and then you go on to the next stage. At that point, uh, you just go ahead and um, you know you move this. To
through number two, and you start over, and you and you you know, any cards that you didn't play, you get to keep in your hand, and then you you deal out another other set more sets of cards you pick and so on and so forth and you continue on until you do you know you do two and then you do three and four and five and six and then the end of the game comes um you get the final scoring after because you get other points obviously as the game goes on but the final scoring is, is that each player gets a number of victory points uh equal to half of your leftover councilmen and money rounded up so even if you just had leftover gold and, and dudes that you never got out on the board you, they're still worth something uh you get a victory point for each building that you have uh whatever it cost to to get them in the first place and then you score each district uh each district the players um get ranked by the number of councilmen um and they get num the number of victory points that they've set up because of the different bridges and gondolas that are feeding into those areas. And so, just for example, if like you had this, this, like that, and that. Um, there's a five, a five, a one, and a one. So that's worth 12 points in that location. And let me just, let's say there was two blue, four green, and a red like that so obviously four green um wins that that location so the person that wins the location gets the most gets all the points 12. the person who's in rank two gets half of that so they get six and that's rounded down if it's a if it's a if, it's a, if you have to round so it's rounded down so that would be worth six and then the person that's in third place gets half of that again and so that would be three once again rounded down and so you, uh, you, you pay, you know, for that and that can keep, keep going as far as running down. Um, but, uh, you, there are no points for, if you don't have any council in the district, obviously. So, um, and then the player who has the most victory points obviously wins the game. If the, you are tied, you use the doge track as the, the tiebreaker. Um, if you're still tied with the doge track, uh, then you just, you just call it a tie and you shake each other's hands and and uh, wish you'd eked out an extra point somewhere along the way so you could have actually won the game. But um, yeah, there you go. That's Rialto. Uh, a lot of uh, cool little things going on. Not all that really that difficult, but um, you know, it's 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 a very Feldian design. It's it's uh, the first round you play, you're going to be like. I don't get what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden the second round, you're like, oh, okay, you know, and then the thing will just click along and click along and click along. So uh, figuring out how to make sure to maximize, uh, you know, where to put the, the bridges and, and how to get your guys and your dudes in those locations though, that's what's fun and that's the puzzle. And that's what keeps this, uh, keeps this one coming back to the table. But anyway, let me tell you exactly uh, what I think about Rialto. So, uh, there you go. Uh, that's how you play uh, Rialto. Um, the game uh, doesn't take um, a lot of explanation, as you have seen. Um, it definitely um, is a game that, uh, as you play it in successive times, um, you, you kind of are able to grasp uh, the strategy and what you should be doing uh, with each and every turn uh, a, a lot easier obviously and then uh, you can really say that about any game uh very few games actually kind of just show exactly what you need to be doing uh the very first time you ever crack open the box and, and you start playing um what did i like about rialto uh you know i i like i, I like the board uh and and i remember when i saw the board uh the very first time and you know also i just i like i like touches like this where they on the back of the board they actually just put them in the backboard you'll never look at this you never will but, you know, they went to the trouble of putting that on the back of the board. But anyway, um, here you have the board, and, and you saw this already, but I, I, I really, I liked how some actual thought uh, really went into the design of, of how uh, this little map of Venice is laid out, and, and how um, each one of these areas uh, are interconnected in, in a certain way. And I and I liked the fact that when you uh, when you play the game each time you play it, um, how quickly 
uh, you go or which spots you're going to be like bidding on, basically, uh, in each spot, um, is different each time. And so uh, it, it almost like when when the, at the very beginning, um, when you when you when you find out what order uh, you're going to be doing uh, the different areas of, of the town, um, it's like every every player needs to take like about good good five minutes, you know, especially if they don't if they play the game before, and just kind of look at the connections and look at um, the, the the later turns you know, that you'll be taking, and it's like, okay, well, in this turn, uh, you know, I'll be able to get a foothold in, in, in this little province, and then so, but by turn four, we'll be kind of coming back, and that's when I can kind of change things up and, and maybe get some more points out of that area, and things like that, and, and I really... I really like that part of the game. It, it's got that kind of a weird serpentine feel uh, to it, uh, if if that makes any sense to you. Uh, I like I like the different buildings. I like the different powers of the buildings. I like that um, you'll be exchanging buildings that were that are helpful um, right away for buildings that actually get stronger. And sometimes uh, the weaker, technically weaker buildings are actually more useful to you later on than certain ones. And so I like that part of the game. I like uh, I like the hand management. I like I like the idea of being able to hold on to some cards, and so you can use them later. Uh, so you can you can have uh, a, a better idea, and that's that whole forethought part of the game. Um, and I like games that that don't what's what I'm looking for here um, that don't have a succinctness. Uh, to their turns. I like I like games that kind of are open-ended um, as far as uh, what you're doing. And, and so um, a game recently that I'm should, I should be doing a review very soon, if not right after this one, for New Amsterdam, it, kind of the same thing. It has that, that kind of weird openness to your turn, you know, and so you you can kind of shortchange yourself. And in reality, you can kind of shortchange yourself in one turn so you can have more options later. And, and I like that. I like that, that that, that planning ability. Uh, too many games out there uh, are still enjoyable games, but just each turn uh, seems to be uh, just a little cosmos all by itself. You know, it's like, well, this turn I'm going to be doing this, this, and this, and that's all I can do. And I, I can't hold anything, I can't change anything, so there's no reason not for me just to just blah, use up all my resources right here and now and don't save anything because I'm just going to just restart it and just jam away the next turn. So, I mean, I, I like that portion of the game. Um, it's a little light uh, for my tastes. Um, I, I never really felt uh, jammed in the brain, if you will. Um, once you kind of figure out... I mean, the, 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 the toughest part of the game is, is really um, figuring out um, the different connections to the different areas. And uh, once you wrap your head around... Um, well, on turn five, I'll be able to, you know, maybe increase my points here, or in turn three, I need to get a foothold here, or what have you. Um, once you get past that, the rest of the game is is really, um, I, I don't want to say simple, but it, it is it is a light euro. But that's fine. I mean, not every game I play has to just, you know, make my head hurt, <laughs> you know, and, and and every turn that I take. So I am totally cool uh, with, with, with playing a game that um, is still challenging and is still enjoyable uh, that only takes 45 minutes or so. And so um, I like it a lot. Um, I, think, I think you have to have three... You know, three to five. I mean, I know that I know there's like a two-player uh, version of the game, and and um, I I didn't like that as much. But then again, I'm not a real big two-player game and a, a gamer, as you well know. So um, you know, but uh, I think five might maybe the game gets a little bit too crowded, and then you start actually getting into kind of a medium weight uh, type of euro. But then I, I think there's almost too much chaos in a way because um, I don't. With a game like this, I I, I want to be able to plan a little bit. I'm not a big I'm not a big hater of 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 of, um, of too much going on or too much chaos. I, I enjoy that in the game, but for a game like this, I think three or four people really really uh, made the game play very well. So so uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Rialto uh, from uh, Taste Rental Games. I said with that ugly ugly logo, um, but. Uh, I, I've been asked to do this, and so what kind of people would I think like Rialto? I think if you're a fan of Stefan Feld, you're gonna love the game. Um, if you're a fan of light to maybe sort of medium weight euros, you're gonna love the game. Uh, you're gonna really love um, if you're somebody who appreciates a game that you can that 
Um, it's challenging and also is, is you know, it's just kind of a quintessential Feldian uh, designer Euro. Uh, and, 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 and But you don't want to play, be sitting at the table all night long. Um, this, this is a game that is right up your, your freaking alley. And I, I really can't see anybody that, that kind of fits into that mold of a gamer uh, as someone that isn't going to enjoy the heck uh, out of this design. So, so there you go. Uh, Rialto. If it isn't in stores right now, it will be very, very shortly. Um, as always, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions or concerns or ideas, by all means, post them below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Um, until next time, uh, this is Undead Viking. You are you, and I want you to have an awesome day. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye.